You're listening to Stand Out Get Noticed, episode 176. Hi there, Rockstar, and welcome to Stand Out Get Noticed. I'm Christina Cantors, speaker, coach, and founder of The C Method, where I help high-performing professionals and business leaders have more confidence, influence, and impact in the workplace through building powerful communication skills. Each week on this podcast, we address a different topic to help you build a success mindset, speak with confidence, build strong relationships, and be an all-around better human. Join our community over on Facebook, search for the group The C Method Rockstars, or go to thecmethod.com slash community. We cannot wait to meet you. All links mentioned in this episode, including show notes, are in the podcast description in your app. Now, last week on the show, if you tuned in, you'll know that we explored language, this concept of language and what to avoid saying when public speaking specifically and what you can replace it with. We talked about how the language we use makes a big impact on how we feel about ourselves, on how we're perceived and what other people think of us. And so last week was all about the language that we use when we speak to other people or when when we're presenting. Today, we're going to explore what language we, we're going to explore one concept around language when we talk to ourself. Because oftentimes we will, we might be aware of what we're saying to other people, but how often do we actually pay attention to what we say when we talk to ourselves or about ourselves? So that's what we're doing today. Show notes will be at thecmethod.com slash 176. You ready? All right, let's do it. Now, I want you to have a think. When you talk to yourself, what sort of language do you use? What I find in many of my clients and the people I work with in my workshops is that the language we use to speak to ourselves is not usually all that positive. And I do experience this too. I'm not saying I'm perfect. I have had to train myself out of it, but it does happen. For example, you're such an idiot. Why would you say that? Oh, they would never pick me. Oh, they probably won't like me. Who am I to be doing this? Why would anyone listen to me? I'm not good enough. I'm not funny. I'm not interesting. And so on and so on. The list continues to grow. Have you ever said any of those things to yourself? maybe even worse things. I want you to think about it. Would you talk to a friend like this? I think not. Now, self-talk and this concept of, you know, the language language we use when we talk to ourselves, self-talk is a huge topic. So it's, it's way too big for one episode. So today we're going to play with one particular word we often use on ourselves. And I'm going to demonstrate how, by changing that one word, it can make a big difference in how we think, feel, and act. And that word is should. Yep, should. Think about where you might have used this word before. For example, I should go to the gym more. I should write that report. I should call that person and apologize. I should be more proactive. I should go for that opportunity. I should start writing my book. I should join Christina's Facebook group. Sound familiar? Now, I want you to have a think about what you might often say to yourself using that word should. And think about how it feels when you say it. So, for example, oh, I should go to the gym more. When we say it, it feels heavy. You know, it doesn't feel good. And it's because it comes from this a negative place. It comes from a place of guilt. Like, oh, I really should drink less wine. It doesn't feel good, does it? It makes us sound like we're not doing enough or that we're not good enough as we are. And in fact, we reinforce the fact that we're not doing it. For example, oh, I should go to the gym more. Reinforces the fact that you're not going to the gym. It's a disempowering word. So I want you to be aware, first off, Are you using that word, should? And other variations of this include, I need to, right? I need to do more of this. That's that's another variation. 
Now, I want to share with you what you can do to change this language pattern. If this is something you catch yourself doing, or maybe you're not aware of it, and after this episode, you're going to be more aware of it, here's what we can do about it. And this is an example of how a simple change in the language we use can change the way that we think and feel and act. Now, for example, let's let's stay with that example. I should go to the gym more. So say say that sentence with should. I should go to the gym more. Doesn't feel good. Now let's turn that word should into could. One small shift. I could go to the gym more. How does that feel? Then I hope I hope you're playing along using the own your own example. So maybe it's oh I, I should go for that promotion. I, I could go for that promotion. Now I want you to change the could into can. So I can go to the gym more. I can go for that promotion. How does that feel? It, you can, I mean, I feel like it's, it's getting a little lighter, isn't it? It's getting a little bit more positive. It's putting us in a slightly more empowered position. Instead of coming from a place of guilt, it's coming from a place of possibility. I can. I can go to the gym more. The next level is to take it to excited. So I am excited to go to the gym more. Some of you might be thinking, I could never get excited about that, but just bear with me. I'm excited. I'm excited to go to the gym more. Say it out loud. The next thing you can do to take it next level is to add a reason why we're excited to go to the gym. So for example, I am excited to go to the gym more because it's going to help me feel good. It's going to release endorphins and I'm going to, it's going to help me sleep better and perform better in the rest of my life. Wow. How does that feel? Feels so much better than, oh, I should go to the gym more, right? Or, oh, I really need to go to the gym more. Or, oh, my partner says I have to go to the gym. You know, all of those disempowering um, language patterns. I I worked uh, through this with a client of mine, a coaching client of mine today. I actually wasn't planning on bringing this up. But as we were packing up and getting ready to, to part ways after our session, we were talking about what steps she was going to take after our session moving forward. And then she looks at a diary and goes, oh, I should write that report. And I said, oh, what, what report? She goes, oh, it's this report I have to do for work. I said, okay, let's turn that language into some empowering language. She's like, okay. <laughs> so we t- got her to turn around. So she went from I, sh- I should write that report to I could write that report to I can write the report. Now, she did struggle a little bit with I am excited to write the report because she said, I really don't know how I could get excited about it. So I said to her, okay, why would it serve? Like, why would you write this report? What good's going to come of it if you get this report done? And she thought about it for a moment and she said, okay, I am excited to write this report because doing so we'll be able to bring our team together and share with them the next steps for for moving forward, which will enable us to get the project done quicker. And her, as she said that, her body language like relaxed, like she opened up and her, her shoulders relaxed. Like it went from the slump of, you know, that shoulder slump when you go, oh, I should, I should do this. I should write that report. And our shoulders slump over and our neck bends forward and our body takes this disempowered, disempowered, unempowered, disempowered. <laughs> I think that's right. Disempowered position and, and a very negative position. So she went from that to shoulders back, her face lightened up and to, to saying, I'm excited to do this because it's going to have a positive impact on my team. So that's something that came up today. And I, I was planning on doing this episode anyway, and it, and it came up in the session. And I thought, well, great, awesome. I can share that on the podcast. Amazing. So it goes to show that we we tend to do this in in many, many you know ways when, when we're speaking about ourselves. 
when we feel that 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 bit of guilt as to why we're not doing something. And I want to share real quickly why this is effective. So why you know getting excited about something or saying that we're excited about something is effective. And it's it's not just about the 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 positive state that we then get put in. <clears throat> Excuse me. It's also because it's bringing a positive emotion into it. And we take action from our emotions. For example, let's say you went out and you I don't know you were shopping and you saw a beautiful dress or a jacket that you just loved. And you went, "Oh, I love this dress even though it's really expensive." And you bought it. Now, did your rational mind make that decision for you? No. It was purely based on emotion because you felt the emotion of joy and, you know, or love or ex- excitement when you saw this dress and you or a jacket or whatever it was and you put it on and you just loved it and you felt that and that that was a feeling and then you acted on that feeling. Similarly, I'm sure we've all had times where we have felt angry or upset or frustrated and acted because of that. Even though we look back on it later and we go, well, it actually wasn't that bad. And our rational mind looks back and goes, yeah, well, probably didn't need to react in that way. But at the time, our emotions made us act. So going back to our example of language, if you tell yourself, I'm excited to do this, I'm excited to give that presentation, right? Instead of, oh, I should start working on that presentation. It's coming up and I'm putting it off. Nope. If you say, I'm excited, it then creates a, a positive emotion within you. And then that that happy, that excited emotion will then prompt you to act on it. As opposed if you're coming from it at it from a place of guilt, like I should do this or I need to, and I'm not doing it and I'm putting it off. That's not a positive emotion and that's not going to then enable you to take action. So I challenge you this week, rock star, to give this a go. Firstly, be aware, are you using a disempowering word like should? When you catch yourself doing it, I want you to pause and I want you to rephrase it out loud, okay, out loud. And try not to say, oh, I shouldn't do that (laughs) because it's a pattern. It's a pattern we need to to change. So go from should to I could to I can to I am excited to to I am excited to for this reason. Give that a go and see what difference it makes. Make it a personal goal or target for yourself to remove all instances of should. And I am absolutely going to do this challenge with you because I am not completely free of shoulds. I catch myself saying them too. So I'm going to do this and I will report back and let you know. I'll report back in the Facebook group. So do come on over and and join uh, the Facebook group and let us know how you go. Show notes for this episode will be at thecmethod.com slash 176. Thank you so much for joining us today. I really appreciate you spending some time with me. Now, before you go, well, after listening, you know what you should do. Oh, oh no, wait, wait, wait. You know what you should. Oh, I almost said it again. You know what you will be excited to do? You will be excited to join our community on Facebook because, here's why, because you'll get to hang out with awesome, like-minded people. People who are committed to their professional development and building their skill and confidence with speaking and communication. So come on over, meet the community. I'll be in there too. I post live Facebook videos, comments, questions. If you need any feedback, I am in there. I'm right on it. And I very much look forward to connecting with you. And that wraps this week's episode. Thank you for being awesome. And I will talk to you next week. I'm Christina Cantors and this has been Stand Out, Get Noticed. Thank you for listening to Stand Out, Get Noticed. To learn more and inquire about the C-Method coaching, keynote and corporate training programs, visit thecmethod.com.
Oh, hi there, Rockstar. Thanks for hanging around. I haven't done this for a while, but I thought I would play you a ukulele song. If you're new to the podcast, you might have been wondering what that ukulele music was. Yes, that's me playing. Um, I, I'm not like I'm not great at ukulele. I'm, <laughs> I'm trying to learn. Oh, here's that. There's that negative self talk again. I'm learning ukulele. I'm gradually getting better. Haven't played for a while, but I like to demonstrate that if you want to get good at any skill, you've got to start somewhere and you've got to you've got to keep learning. And I demonstrate this with my ukulele. And I show you that I'm not perfect, but I'm putting it out there and I'm giving it a go. My song this week, um, so a couple of weeks ago I went to a it was a crap music dance party, a crap music rave. It was really funny. And they were playing all these really terrible 90s and 80s songs. And this song, and and I loved it, just so you know. I loved the crap out of that crap music dance party. And this was one of the songs that they played. And when it came on, I was like, oh, I love this song. And Aaron, my partner, just looked at me and rolled his eyes. He had a terrible time, but I loved it. And it's called, it's called Break My Stride by Matthew Wilder. All right, let's do it. And I like this song because it's very positive and uplifting. Let's do it. Last night I had the strangest dream. I sailed away to China in a little rowboat to find ya. And you said you had to get your laundry clean. What no one to hold you, what does that mean? And you said, ain't nothing gonna break my stride Nobody gonna slow me down Oh no, I got to keep on moving Ain't nothing gonna break my stride I'm running and I won't slow down Oh no, I got to keep on moving You're on the road Slow. 